hey, everyone, we were just getting ready to record a video showing what we worked on this week. And I told Zayas, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You know, I launched this tool. Let me share my screen here. And I keep coming in here and I say, hey, look for auto hotkey files, look in a certain source, and then set the date to last seven or six days. And I realized this is super simple. Like I'm manually updating this GUI to be the same thing every time. So therefore, I don't really need a GUI. I just need to, to have those parameters set for a given script to go get those list of modified files in the last six or seven days. We'll go with six because I don't want it to overlap. But, um, I said to Zayas, why don't you create a video on this? And then and then a tool for us to use. And then I thought, well, why don't we actually record the video making the, the tool? Making the tool. <laughs> That's right. So a um, few things. There's a few things that... I'm just going to set as variables on my script, but that they don't have to be variables. I'm just going to do it that way so that we can keep track of what your request was. So the first thing is that we're going to start with the um, requires that active. I bump your DPI up a bit. Here, uh, we start with a single instance with the requires directive. I really suggest you start all your scripts with that. Um, and now we're going to say, you said that you want to find the... Uh, all the extensions, all the auto hotkey files. So this is your search, your query, really. And so this is going to be your query. A really good point I want to emphasize here is Isaias is thinking ahead of like, he could have hard coded AHK into our thing, but why not put it here as a variable? So yeah, that so that later I don't, I don't have any. Uh, You're not bound to it. Right. Because now we have the query. Um, we needed the location, so location would be the, the, the well, we're going to start with the S drive, for example, um, and that's where I'm going to look for everything that is an auto hockey file, and I will also need the date, so the modified date, so the last modified. Well, yeah. Now, here's the interesting part. We here need a math kind of thing. We have to get A now, right? Um, in our hotkey v2, you have the date add and date diff. So I could say, what is the date difference between now and minus six? I think I, I think you have to say six days. So six, uh, let me see, days. Let me look at the, so date time one is A now. I need... No, that's not what I need to do. Is date add. This one is the one that I don't like how it works. I have the A now here, and then I need the time, how many time what the time is, minus six, and then days. I think it is what I have to do. So that would give me from six days uh right. in the past. Yeah, Let's double check works. that before yeah, I go exactly. back. Uh, yeah, so I will just go ahead, run it. Let me save it in the desktop. This is going to be our um, last work on .hk, for example. So let's see what we get here. <clears throat> so when I stop right here, oh, let's see this. I run it. And I get the last modified being 2023, 11, 13, and now we're at 19. So it did do six days. So this is how you do it. It's a very, it's just annoying because you see the word add confuses me, right? Sure. And then, yeah. So when you say date add, you might think that it's always only adding days into the future. No, you can use negative numbers to do the backward math. Now, the other one, which has the name that you might have used, which is the, the difference, right? Like, But this one just tells you how many days are different between two dates. So it usually confuses me a little bit, but that's it. I have the query, the location, the date last modified. So we're good to go. Let's create a little quick GUI where I'm going to dump this in. So I'm going to create a GUI here. Um, and the GUI is going to have a list view. It will at least few actually. The list view is going to be, I don't know, 600 wide with at least 20 rows. And I'm going to have now the headers. So, what you want to know about this uh, is the file name, 
file name, um, the folder, I guess, the parent folder, location, and the size. Let's keep it simple. So just those three things. Um, <clears throat> we have that. Let's just show the GUI and return. So right now I should have an empty, yeah, empty list view, and I'm just going to fill that in with the information, which is what you want. Instead of having to double click uh, or uh, search every single time, we're just going to double click on this file and it's going to tell you. That's it. Nothing else. And we could later on, we'll see what actions we can have. So now what we're going to do is loop files. Oh if I can spell. Uh, the location, I want to start with the location and then append my query. So this is a little bit of an annoyance because now I have to remember in my location to always have the backslash. I, perf I usually don't do that. I just make it drive. I just, I'm going to change the name of the variable because I'm changing what it is. This is the drive where you're going to search. And I manually put the backslash here. I use it as a separator, but also so you don't have to. <laughs> you see what I mean? So I, I just keep it like that. I put my query, whatever query you have. And then we're going to make sure that we look for files, directories, and recurse. So that's what it does. And um, we're going to check, get the last modified date for the current file. So file get time. So this guy here, file get time, allows me to get different times for a file. Um, we can start with the file name, which will be a loop file full path. This is the one that I want. And the time that you can put here is a letter, if I remember. Um, it would be the M, if I remember right, for modified time. Yeah, M for modification time. M for modification time, C for creation time, and A for last access. But we're going to go with M. I remembered it right. And then we're going to get a timestamp, which is similar to A now. So it's the same type of. And, and I want it that way because I'm going to compare the two, right? So you're going to have here. Um, modified time for this file. And then I'm going to say, if last, see if, if the modified time is greater or well, let me see, greater than, right? The last modified time, that's what I want to actually include in my search, right? So it's oh, the ones that be, greater than the modified time. So when you step through this an example, it'll make a lot more sense to people. Right, right. Like but you. basically, I just want to make sure that my modified time is more than my right. the one that I care about, which is six days uh, in the past. Right. But I'm going to make this the opposite so that I just say, if the last modified is bigger than my modified date, then ignore that file. I don't care about it. So I will do it that way so that it is easier for me later on. So if my, hmm, let's, I will not rename that now, but in general, I would modify that variable to be a little bit clearer on what I'm trying to do. But that's it. We're going to ignore anything that is modified um, farther in the past that I care about. And if I do get this file, now I, didn't, I do need its name, its location, and its size. From these three things, the only one that I don't get easily, or well, not easily, is that I have to use a different function is the file get size. And that one here, I will pass my file name and the units here can be kilobytes, megabytes, or something like that. I would assume that you're gonna be working on very small files, so kilobytes might be right. Yeah. Let me just double check that if I can get anything smaller than that. Um, the units here are bytes, kilobytes, or megabytes. So maybe I could just pick bytes, and depending on what it is, then I could modify it. I would say kilobyte, because I can't think in bytes. 
That's that's true, but then in kilobytes you would have files that say zero kilobytes when they are not. Yeah. If they're very small. But I really think that any any well, we will figure it out right yeah. now. We will see right. Uh yeah, size. Well, so and that might be one of those things that you put up above as a variable and make For it example, a yes. Thing, right? Yeah. Yes. Now I get the file size, and from the others, I use the split path to get from a loop file full path. I want to get the file name, which is going to be the, the whole thing. So file name and the directory, so file directory. Now I have all I need to create what I need. And as we're looping, we can just create this GUI before looping. And as I'm looping, I will just go ahead and add it into my list view. So this, I could capture right away a variable, any variable, to capture that list view so that I can refer to it later and then just say, add a new row of data. And the row is going to have the file name, the file directory, and the file size. That's it. And now, as I'm doing that, let's go ahead and take a look. I could run this and see what happens. But you will see, you see how how long it took for me to get this view after I clicked. You will see what that is in a second. But for the for this, I will also specify that it's in kilobytes so that we know what it is. And just a few more things. Let's do the LV get count. Oh, cool. Yeah. Absolutely. For the columns. Um, let me let me oh. do a few things before I before I do what you're thinking. At yeah. the bottom, I will have a count. I will put yes. that in. But let me fix so loop all my columns. And for them, I'm gonna modify the columns for each index and make it auto HDR, which gives me the um, everything, the data actually structured correctly. But before I continue, let me also, as we're looping, change the options and make it not redraw until I finish. I was going to ask you if you were going to add that. Right. So after I finish with all the changes I'm going to make, then I redraw it. And you will see the time difference on that. Um, it's it's a little bit faster. It's, it's just what it is. Now, we will need this a little bit um, bigger because it seems to me that there are some file names that are very long. And when we have that, or I can just make the path at least be a, a fixed length, right. that it doesn't matter how big the, the right. this one is. So that one is my second index. So I would do outside of my loop dot modify call. I will make my second one to be. So you you know. could have adjusted your loop there to have said, hey, if it is two, if it's index, if it is index right. two, blah, blah, but like just, yeah, yeah, right. I will just make it so that please make it all the headers correctly, but then the modif the two. I, I usually yeah. do this, yeah. do the common things in a loop, and then whatever special thing right. I need, I do it outside of the loop, right. and I should now yeah, get. Then you're not yeah. trying to do logic every time on something inside the loop. Right. right. Now, the interesting thing about this is that I probably don't care that much about the location because probably you could add uh, that if you double click on it, it just opens the folder. But so I, we, sometimes we do. We do no, yeah. we do care about it, but for not what you're thinking, we don't actually even need um, it, but we want it sorted on that because okay. that way okay. the files are grouped together in a, in a natural way. Right. But okay. Right. I don't really care about the actual where they file. are. You yeah. just want to really for grouping. Sort. Yeah. Okay, so now at that point, what I can do is um, sort on that column, and um, I'm changing its size. But I could also then go ahead and sort. And let's see what happens there. There it is. It is sorted alphabetically on that. Cool. Yeah. Now so this this give this gave me a group of files. We don't know how many there are. So let's add those two features, and we can stop there. It is that if I double click on this, it would open that folder, which is a very simple feature to implement. 
if the list view already has the data. You will see what I mean in a second. Um, <clears throat> so let's start with that. My list view here, which I have in my ver variable, I now have to capture an event. So I'm going to, um, on event, I'm going to capture the double click event. And when you double click, what we're going to do is call my open folder function. Now that function, I have to define it. Let's go ahead and define it. Let's put it down here. I don't care about the parameters right now. So I don't care about anything. Um, well, I can care about the list view, but I have that list view as a global variable anyways. Remember guys that in V2, if you add a variable here outside on the, you have in the, in the, in the, yeah, I have access to it inside the folder. So I don't have to specify a function to capture it because I do have it. So what I want to do is um, list view get content. And this one, I will pass it the list view. Oh, I have to capture the row, don't I? So let me have the, the first parameter of the double click command is the object where you clicked, which I have in a variable already, so I don't care. But the second one is the info parameter, which is usually a row number when you double click. And we can confirm that just to make sure. If you go to the on event and open that the help file there, and you look for the double click down here. So if you look for the double click, it gives you two parts. It is the object where you clicked and the info and the info for list view and tree view and status bar, it is the same as the click event, which the in info in a list view is the row number you clicked on. So I do need the, the row number because I want to know which row you call up, you clicked. But here's the key, the cool thing. Um, I have to pass it the options, the control, and the win title. Well, I need the row, but not there. I need to pass the options. And this is the cool thing. I can tell which column information I want, and that's the row. Well, the column. Mm, I want column two, which is the second one, which is just the file directory. Folder, yeah. And only of the selected or selected. Um, let me see, hold on. I get the current row. So the options are the selected, the focused, this and that. So when I double click, I will have something selected automatically. So I just want the selected one, just column two. And that, if I message box that, I should get something interesting. So. When I double click on any of these guys, I should get the path of where I'm double clicking. You see that? Which means I could definitely save that into a variable and then just run it. Use the run command on the path. And I will try it because maybe I did something wrong. But I guarantee if this, if the loop here gave me that path, that path should be totally fine. But there you go. And again, I don't need a variable right here anymore because it's the same thing. I was going to ask it. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't really matter. I was just so making nice. the point. And look at this. Now I have a one-liner. Oh, if it is a one-liner, right. let's have our parentheses here. And I don't need these brackets. I can define well, a yeah. single-line function like this right. because it is single-line. So this, when I run it, if I double click any of the rows, it should just open that folder for me. Cool. It's, it's a very simple feature. Uh, it's a very hand, uh, handy feature, but you know. Could you bring in your line thirty six up and up as a fat arrow up inside to the? Or it needs to go to that first and then do it. You can't use it up above when on the click. I could. So basically, I don't need to define this whole function. I could just copy this. And here, when I'm def defining the event, I could do the fat arrow right so here. Yeah. Right. So I could just do it there. But when you're doing that, remember, double click sends two parameters. You might want to ignore those. Oh, well, no, not ignore them. Well, yeah, I, I, I already have it. So I don't need the row number or anything. 
I can ignore those two parameters. But yeah, to your point, I can do it right there. I don't even need it down here. That way, when I'm reading the code, I know exactly that in double click, I'm going to... So I tell everyone, hey, V1 isn't that horrible, but when you're working with a GUI, you, you just, you want to use V2. It's that so is correct. So right now we have a very hand, very cool, handy feature that it doesn't take that long. Notice what I mentioned before, that we have some of them that are in kilobytes. We could capture that. So when, when I get a file size, if the file size is zero, I could get it in the other one. That's totally fine. Uh, we don't have to do that right now. I don't even really necessarily care about the size. Anymore. Right. So now let's add at the bottom the um, status bar. So for me, I usually add all my controls in one place. So I go up where my controls are. And for main, I will have another variable called SB. Uh, I'm going to capture the, the status bar. And ChatGPT already knows what I'm trying to do without me even telling it. So let's add the status bar. Um, we don't need any options there. Um, I want to capture it so that later on, once I finish my list view, then I can say um, here, dot set text and the text. Oh, it knows what I'm trying to do. How many? So this is the list view, the get column. So I have, well, not column in this case. It was almost fine. But if you, I don't want to count the columns, I want to just count how many files there are, and it will tell me how many files were found, which is so extremely simple, you know, like, Jesus, right? You don't have to do anything. I like to put a space right before the text, because if you see, it is kind of like touching the border. I would like that that was the default, but now you have to manually put that space there. And now you have your... 33 fi files found, you get a count, you get a That's very cool, folder. Man. And it was not that, you know, it was very, very fast for me to do. Um, That's the cool thing about AutoHotKey and GUIs. I, I, I wouldn't say that GUIs in AutoHotKey are perfect, but look, 35 lines, we have a very handy tool to get the latest ones, and every six days you run this and you get the cool. Now, tell me if you agree with this statement. I think if if people had both our intermediate auto hotkey course and our GUIs and V two course, this has this all. Is, the this is right? yeah. This yeah. is basically all of this. We talk about all, all of that, that. right? Yes. Yeah. It, it's still like that's all you need to get to really be able to create your own GUIs and create your own tools. GUIs are amazingly powerful, and um, yeah. I often uh, don't think about creating one, but it's <laughs> sometimes it's just need the info, right? Well, list view and list views are phenomenal, right? right? Like list views and tree views, depending on how your data is structured, are are really helpful. I, uh, they're super reliable, easy to work with, and that's why I thought, hey, this this will be a no brainer, right, to create it. I, I would say, like, I would, I have used list views in most of my programs. Most of the time that I have to display data in any way. I will use a list view, but, and here's the last part that I want to mention to your point here, I have three things that are variables. I could have put those down here, the drive and the query, I could have hard coded it. And then the time here, I could have just put it here, you see, but um, it is good to have it as options here so that not only you know where to change the things, you have it here at the top, you just change this to the D drive, and now the script is working for the D drive. You change the extension. The, yeah. For... You change the extension. Yeah. And that's the same thing. Now I run it, and it would just go ahead and give me all the D files. You could keep go working at it and say, oh, while it's looping, show me a progress bar or something. You can continue adding features to this, and... but we already have kind of like the basics of what it does very and quickly. If... If this script wasn't built for this exact purpose, I'd say, hey, at, create a GUI to start where we can edit that extension, edit the drive, right, and the time. But that's not where we were going with this. I want This is something I'm going to use every week when we're making our other video, which we'll make after this. So yeah. I'm like, I'm, let's just hard code them, right? Then it's simpler and it works yeah. fine for our purpose. Right.
So thanks for watching. Um, remember, all of our courses come with a 200% money back guarantee. So if you purchase one and you know you have any problems whatsoever in the first 30 days, we're more than happy to not only refund what you paid, but we'll double it. Uh, that's how sure we are that our, our courses are amazing. Auto hockey is amazing. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like the video. If you learned something and really like this, it really helps us out. We're Right now, we're releasing videos like three times a week because we got too many in our backlog. But uh, we're the largest auto hockey channel out there and creating great stuff. And thank you. Thanks.